Mass Effect has become one of the most popular video game franchises this past generation. The trilogy of games warped countless hours out of me, especially since I don't really play video games all that much anymore. In fact, Mass Effect 3 was the only game I played to completion this year. So when I heard that Funimation and EA were teaming up with Production IG to create a new all-original animated movie, my interest was piqued. But would it hold up to the grand sci-fi story that EA and Bioware had come up with? Let's find out in this Mass Effect Paragon Lost review. Production IG was the animation studio behind this, and boy does it show. Production IG happens to be one of my favorite animation studios out there, and they do great work. These are the guys that worked on Ghost in the Shell, IGPX, and so many others, and their expertise shows here. While it's not as good as some of their theatrical output, it's definitely above what they've done on television. The budget is clearly high and it looks very, very nice on DVD. It makes me really wish Funimation had sent me a Blu-ray because man would this thing look amazing in high definition. I did notice a couple of moments where the animation was a little wonky, but it didn't affect the video quality at all. Audio quality, 5.1 track here, all the voices come through the center speaker and sound great. Everything is crisp, everything is clear, no complaints about the 5.1 track. There's also a stereo option if you guys want to use that, but there is no Japanese option. This is a English dub only, which is fine because this is an American and Japanese co-production. The dub clearly came first, and we'll get into that a little later on in the review. Now, if you know the Mass Effect franchise, you're going to recognize Vega. He's actually in Mass Effect 3. This little movie takes place right before those events and tells of Vega's story. It's compelling, it's fun, it fits within the continuity of the games, and it honestly got to me. I thought it was going to be kind of like a cheap tie-in, but it really impressed me how well done and how thought-provoking the piece actually was. It reminded me of the Animatrix with its side stories that connect to the main story and really help flesh out some of those bits in the movie that you really wanted to know about. And that's what this does. It helps flesh out a character that you knew very little about. Uh, yes, he's on your crew, but you don't really... At least for me, I didn't really speak to him that much. And now, knowing the information I know from this movie, it's going to be a much better experience when I play Mass Effect 3 again and talk to Vega. So it was really nice to get all this story. The characters are a little stereotypical and cliche, but they are fun and they do have personalities. Uh, you do feel for a couple of them when they do bite the dust. I'm not going to say who does and who doesn't, but they're all fleshed out pretty well. Character designs are great. Uh, Production IG giving a different look to what Mass Effect actually looks like. I mean, uh, Mass Effect has a very realistic look. Uh, with its character designs and character models, but here, obviously the anime filter has happened. And it actually looks great. It's not as daunting and different as I thought it was going to look like. The only exception being the Krogans. They didn't come out as quite as good as I would have liked them to. The cast is not the returning cast from the game. Uh, for example, Patrick Seitz is playing Anderson instead of Keith David. And I have to say, Patrick Seitz actually does a pretty good impression of Keith David. But the problem is a lot of these characters aren't coming back with their original actors, the main exception being Vega, and I'll get to him in a minute. The problem is a lot of these characters kind of don't sound the same uh, with the exception here and there. But for the most part, these are all original characters and they, the voices they have sound totally fine within the context. I do have to make an exception for Freddie Prince Jr. coming back as James Vega. He is unwavering admiration of Shepard comes clearly through here just as it did in the game and it's just a great consistent performance that matches the game and even though it does it in certain points, Freddie Prince Jr. is really the standout of the cast here. He brings a lot of depth and emotion to the role that clearly needed to be there and he does an excellent job of conveying all of the emotions of the decisions that he has to make. He definitely has a the world's on my shoulders type of vibe to him and it comes clearly and it matches exactly what needs to be in the role. He really stood out. The cast overall is great, they do the best they can, but the characters they're given unfortunately aren't as fleshed out as Vega's. Vega is really the big standout here and luckily his performance is big enough to fill in the shoes of that role.
Rounding out the set is a good set of extras. EA gives you a quick tour of their facilities, and we also get to sit down with the creators at Bioware and Production IG as to how they feel about the Mass Effect universe as a whole, as well as get some fun insight into the behind the scenes of making a game. It's all very informative and fun, but it doesn't have much to do with the content itself with the exception of one extra. I would have liked more extras from the Japanese side, and I would have liked more from the dub side actually voicing the material. But overall, it's very packed for an anime DVD release. Overall, Mass Effect Paragon Lost is a great film, and it comes with a lot of cool little extras that you fans will enjoy forever. It's something that you should add to your collection this holiday season. We hope you've enjoyed this review from us at Geeky. Please follow us on Twitter at Geeky Inc. and visit our website at geekeinc.com.